I've been using my Easy Presso K Plus grinder a couple of times a day for, I, I believe, coming on about four months now. It currently retails for about 250 US dollars. So, given the difficulty in finding a Comandante over the last year or two, I figured this would be a terrific alternative. And in short, I've been absolutely delighted with it. The build quality is precise, clean, solid, and quite attractive all the way around. The bearing mechanism and the alignment of the burrs and shaft feel absolutely rock solid, much more so than the already pretty solid Time War grinder I was coming from. One feature that stands out immediately is the terrific external adjustment mechanism on the top of the grinder. It is easy to use whether the grinder is loaded or unloaded, the markings are clear as day, so you never wonder which setting you left it in. And the clicks are extremely fine, they're just 22 microns apart. So in brief, although the grind adjustment is not the finest around, it is still on the finer side and I have personally had no problems dialing in espresso, although that is not something I do all that often. The wooden knob is large and feels solid even in my rather large hands. And again, after several hundred uses to date, it still has a nice, uh, tight, precise fit onto the grind shaft. Inside you'll find a little uh, sort of bulb to blow air to clean the coffee, dust, and chaff. Also in the package are a couple of rubber bands that I've yet to find a compelling use for, but I suppose they're to provide a little bit extra grip over some of the metal surfaces of the grinder itself, but I just don't find that particularly helpful. There's also a brush which is firmer on the beige side and softer on the black side to get it even cleaner in between uses. The travel case is a soft case, not a hard one, but it's reinforced and should hold up quite easily inside any normally packed bag. The catch cup uses a magnetic attachment and I find it easy to use and quite surprisingly solid. One interesting feature is that, at least on the K Plus model, the bottom of the catch unscrews, which comes in handy if you want to put on a more espresso specific fitting that makes it easy to dump your coffee into the basket without having to try to pour it out the side. The plunger-like uh, kind of cone shape, I suppose, pulls right out, so your grounds will drop straight out of the bottom. And it's quite easy to put in place if you so choose. I have used it on occasion on the, the rare days that I do make espresso. And I should note that there is no retention to speak of when you pull the uh, little stopper cone thing out of the middle. It comes out cleanly and does not seem to retain any noticeable amount of coffee. Some of the Velcro inside is a little bit curious. For instance, that pouch doesn't have anything to Velcro shut to, and the Velcro strap on the right-hand side, as we'll see in a second, um, may just have been installed backward on mine, or perhaps there is some obvious use that I'm overlooking, but again, it doesn't seem quite right. So you can see that the largest strap with the soft side of the Velcro does seem to be facing upside down. So at least in my case, I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to, uh, to fasten it, but I guess, <laughs> I guess this will suffice. It is on the heavier side, as you would expect from the solid build. When it's packed up in the case with all its accessories, it comes in at a little over 1,140 grams, or about uh, two and a half pounds, I believe. And just the grinder itself weighs 723 grams, which is a little bit over one and one half pounds. This won't be a detailed grind comparison across the range. I will do one quick demonstration. This is at setting six and a half, so number six plus five clicks, or the dot between the six and seven. And that is in the ballpark of what I like to use for a single serving V60 brew with about 15 grams of coffee, which is what I'll put in here. You can see that the coffee is a little bit on the darker side. I would consider it probably a full city roast. 
So bear in mind that it might grind a little bit faster than a lighter one that, uh, that is a little denser and takes more effort. And I do appreciate that the, uh, those little metal bars that mount the central assembly to the outer walls of the grinder are pretty low down inside, so they don't really cause any problems with beans bouncing out. So that took only about 20 seconds for that 15 gram batch. You can see there's a substantial amount of retention on the bottom of the grinder. I do find giving it a couple of taps, maybe on two or three different points around the circumference of the grinder helps knock a little bit of that out, but some of it does remain. I believe that is normal and it's not out of line with what I've experienced on any other metal bodied grinder. Now let's do a close up of some of the results of the grinding here. I don't know that this phone is going to capture all that much detail, so my apologies if it's hard to discern. But the, uh, the consistency is good in a nutshell. There's certainly some presence of fines, but boulders are pretty uncommon, especially at these middle of the road grind settings. Now just for kicks, I am presenting side by side the EasyPresso K Plus on the left and a roughly similar grind size from my Time More Chestnut G1 on the right. And I hasten to add that the Time More is already a good grinder that is a massive step up from, uh, you know, one of those $30 Hario Slim Mills or something along those lines. But if this is coming through the video here, the Time More does leave quite a few more boulders and chip like pieces than the Easy Presso. So whether that improvement is worth almost double the price to jump from something like a Time More to the Easy Press OK Plus, that's a hard call. I believe the difference does show up in the cup and I consistently get a uh, little bit more predictable and I would say somewhat sweeter cup from pour overs that I've made with the Easy Presso. Of course, there are some other Easy Presso models as well that cost significantly less and use similar, if not identical, burrs. So you'll have comparable grind speed, just uh, not necessarily the magnetic catch and not necessarily the super fine external clicks to adjust, depending on which alternative you choose. But if the K Plus is representative of Easy Presso's quality in general, I would absolutely recommend it as I, I believe a good balance between, on the one hand, not getting just the cheapest grinder that isn't crappy, but on the other hand, not going all out past the point of diminishing returns and dropping four or $500 or something in that range. So long story short, it's a terrific grinder, pleasure to use. Um, I really cannot find fault with the build quality and it's hard to imagine anyone not being happy with it. Anyway, I hope you found this overview helpful and if there are some other details about this grinder that you'd find useful, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and take care.